Welcome, apprentices and acolytes to Unlock the Knowledge. Today, we're going to be talking about whether or not you should read The High Republic. Ready up. Ready up. My destiny. Apprentices and acolytes, you know it's time for Unlock the the knowledge the star wars podcast heard all around the galaxy and i am lord dagavir coming in to give you all of the knowledge and you yourselves coming into the dark temple visited by mara jade luke skywalker and kyle katarn and so many of the force sensitives like yourself so the high republic you know i know there's a lot of people out there that haven't read it yet and all they want to say is ah you know the high republic is a huge flop ah the high republic isn't that great the high republic isn't star wars well You know what? They're all wrong. You have to read it for yourself, okay? Now, I do believe that some people need to understand that the High Republic is not the greatest thing ever. It's not the newest, awesome, most amazing project Star Wars has ever seen. But there are solid Star Wars stories, amazing Star Wars characters, and probably some of the most unique things that I've ever seen in Star Wars as a whole. But the thing is, is like when you are an Expanded Universe fan, when you are a hardcore fan, <clears throat> you are exposed to so many Star Wars elements that the casual fan base is never going to see. You know, it, you, it's not just where the live action comes from, right? It's not just about the movies. It's about so much more because Star Wars is everything. It's the video games. It's the books. It's the comics. Everything is all on one storyline. Everything is canon. And that is the importance of Star Wars. You don't get that in every other universe. So many times there's retcons, and of course there's retcons with Star Wars, but at least with this, uh, this expanded universe is, is ultimately used as a foundation to build off of. We see that a lot. It's, and it's the architecture, and that's what's so glorious about things like the High Republic, the Old Republic, uh, the New Jedi Order, and of course we're getting Dawn of the Jedi now with the movies as well, so I can't wait to see everything, all the media that's going to be coming from that. But the Star Wars has ultimately birthed all of these projects, and the High Republic by far is one of the better Star Wars projects that we've seen. Now, should you read it? Yes. When should you read it? Now. As soon as you can, because I feel like the High Republic is is about to get to its pinnacle. I do believe, however, that the first installment of the High Republic, these are the first couple of books that we've had, Um, in my opinion, are better than what we have right now in this second phase or this second wave, I want to say. I'm not really sure if it's phase is essentially all the stuff that they get. So what I'm talking about is the, the release of these books. They categorize them in phases, like Marvel and waves. And so I think phase one is essentially the entire thing. And then they have waves of stuff. So like wave one, wave two, wave three. And that, I think, contributes or culminates into the entire phase what they have for marketing and and the story so we're at the second part of it now and what the story did is it took you back in time before the original characters that were introduced into the high republic so you have essentially a prequel for the story that is a prequel of the prequels right and that's a little confusing but at least with the high republic it's all very easy to uh understand and follow but i did not like how they were taking us back in time from the original characters that were introduced. I think that the original characters that were introduced were some of the coolest characters. The ultimate design, of course, you got Starlight Beacon, which is essentially the watchtower. Uh, you know, this awesome space station that you look out into space and all the Jedi are there. Easily one of the coolest concepts of ideas that I think I've ever seen in Star Wars. Uh, and then you have some of like the Jedi Council, who of course Yoda is there as well, and so many other Jedi uh, Jedi Council members that we know and love in the prequels. And of course we have the new additions, you know, like Avar Chris, Stellan Geos, Elzar Man. These are characters that are kind of an integral, well, I mean they are an integral part of that Star Wars story, but then you get other characters like Bel Zedifar, right? Who is kind of like the young gun that everyone I think ends up liking, and then he's got a really cool companion, which is kind of like a hound door from Pokemon where it's like a fire type wolf really cool really enjoyed that stuff uh, and then you have other characters from the comics uh, that ultimately become a part of the said story because they're telling so many parts of it but what I do think that the High Republic offers is expression the expression of Jedi the appearance and uniqueness of Jedi at this time because there are so many things about the Star Wars galaxy that 
just aren't really known at this point. I mean, technology is something that we don't really see change over time, and the High Republic does a really good job at showing you how much the galaxy has ultimately evolved for the better by the time of the movies. I think one of the biggest struggles that the story has, or at least that it shows, reveals to us, is communication. Being able to send frequencies and transmissions from across the galaxy. It's much harder during the time of the High Republic, and that also plays a huge plot into the story and the conflict in which, you know, characters can't tell, characters can't, uh, they need help and they're not able to get it because the buoy and the communication is down and there's no way to do this. Hyperspace is kind of an unknown. And there's still so many things they don't understand about it. It's kind of new. Uh, then of course the, that that is that that is something that's really delves into the main plot of the story and also tragedy you know there may not have been grand scale wars that like we see in the galactic civil war or of course everything else that happens in the empire and the rebellion and of course the first order but there are conflicts new conflicts characters that we've never seen before and villains and some of these villains are probably the most difficult the most terrifying entities that the Jedi have ever encountered even beyond the Sith and that's one thing that I uh, wanted to talk about is the nameless the nameless are by far some of the most intriguing villains that we've seen stories because they eat force sensitives they not just Jedi but they eat, uh, would, uh, in my opinion they would eat Sith as well uh, it's very it's very I want to say conflicting at times because you would you would understand the force right and and everything is connected to the force right Yoda teaches us, us that in Empire Strikes Back and how these creatures are able to uh, not just maneuver and find and seek like a predator literally and and the Jedi is the prey and how they ultimately like smell in the air and they're connected to the force as well uh, but the Jedi and the way they perceive this you know uh, in imminent danger, this impending doom of these characters and these characters ultimately eating them and coming to them. And I, I, I love the way it's described in the stories as something terrifying. They have just this feeling of dread, like an anxiety attack, but it, but it also nullifies them. It also completely neutralizes them as, as a person, their force abilities. Uh, sometimes it's, it's, it's total fear. A complete and utter uh, fear of where their all of their senses are basically destroyed. They are distraught. They don't know what to do. They can barely talk. They can barely breathe. They they can't do force abilities. And then if you are a victim, you succumb to them, and you are a a corpse, a carcass that is filled with dust and, and stone and dirt. And and it's terrifying because you don't necessarily see that in Star Wars. Uh, and I think that's one of the coolest things about the High Republic is uh, the Old Republic has some really amazing world building features. You know, you have the Terran Tetic, you know, you have the Rakatan Empire, you know, there's so many things out there, of course, like Mortis as well. Uh, Belsavis is a really awesome planet, you know, with prisoners. And then, of course, you know about Yavin as well, the Masasi warriors. So, uh, you know, this is, I feel like, the High Republic's version of that. Is it, is it as good as the Old Republic? I think that's impossible really to say because the Old Republic had so many years to saturate, you know, to sit there and kind of live. And it, it never really expired. Even to this day, it hasn't expired. It's still there and everybody enjoys it as well as myself. And the High Republic, I think, needs to be given that chance to settle. Because as, as, as much as I love the High Republic, I think the High Republic also has overexposed us to some Star Wars Expanded Universe stuff with comics and books. There is a lot of it, fam, and there's a lot of it all at once. But it seems like they're trying to connect everything again, and they're gonna be bringing us and reintroducing us to the characters that we initially, first, at for most, uh, were introduced as the first introduction to the High Republic. And I think now is the best time ever to pick up your stories. Pick them up now. Go and get Light of the Jedi. Read about it. Please, don't stop. Even if you do not enjoy the story, try to get to Rising Storm, because I feel like Rising Storm is the best High Republic story. High Republic story, Rising Storm is the best. It's the best. I, 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 will, I will die on that hill. I think Rising Storm is by far one of the greatest Star Wars books ever. So please, go out there, 
enjoy it. Find one of your characters that, re that you really like. Listen to the story over and over, because that's the one thing about how, what Charles Soule's, uh, Charles Soule did. He is the writer of the first book of the High Republic, which is Light of the Jedi. And I think that it can be a little overwhelming at first, because there is so much happening. But get the audiobook. The audiobook is fantastic. It puts everything in perspective. It's literally movie quality. And I think this is probably your best bet to truly enjoy the High Republic. Because when you read things, it's hard to read people's names, it's hard to read people's planets. You don't necessarily know how it's pronounced. And then I think that also affects ambience and really setting in and being immersed. That is why I love audiobooks so freaking much, fam. And this is your opportunity because you go on Audible, you get the free trial, you try it out, you die, you dry, it's, oh my goodness gracious, I said die it and drown it. You download it on your phone, get it on your mobile device, listen to it in your car, listen to it before you sleep, you shower, doing whatever. And it's probably the best time to really introduce yourself to these Star Wars characters. And they have voices. Mark, uh, Mark Thompson does a fantastic job. He's probably, the, in my opinion, the greatest audiobook art or writer, writer, listener, reader, voice artist, whatever you want to call him. He's fantastic. And I feel like I just can't have a Star Wars story without Mark Thompson being that voice that I hear. And with all of that being said, there's a lot of horror in it. There's a lot of mystery. There's a lot of intriguement. Uh, and I think also when you get deep down into the story, the force, the force itself, I think, is, des is described so well. It's depicted beautifully. Uh, description inside of your head. Uh, so well. So you get a lot of imagery as well, especially when these characters fall, especially when these characters struggle and, and conflict themselves with everything that's going on. The only, I, I want to say one of the other things that I think is a great criticism is the villains. You don't really feel the villains are a great threat or interesting, I want to say, until well into the couple of the first or second waves. You know, you get uh, a little bit here and there about certain characters that are very important. But the main villain, Martian Rowe, uh, it took me a while to really take him seriously. It took me a while to really feel like he's a big bad. Um, and I also feel like as of right now, I don't think he is a, is a great villain, a powerful villain. Because when you think about villains in Star Wars, you think about Darth Vader. You think about the Emperor, you know? You think about Count Dooku, you know? You think about Darth Bane. There are so many Star Wars characters, including, you know, the uh, the lesser, the pseudo-villains like Darth Maul, right? And, and characters uh, like Vizsla, things like that. So many Star Wars characters uh, that are, are inside the Star Wars universe that are pseudo, and then, you of course, they feed into the bigger bad, which is usually the Emperor or, you know, the Empire, or the First Order, or things like that. And uh, and that's what I feel like, while I think the High Republic does a very good job of creating pseudo-villains, you know, and pseudo-characters and anti-heroes, I don't think it's very strong, at least in the first wave, with Martian Rowe. I do think that the second phase of High Republic books, with the Mother, uh, which is funny because I just got them playing Diablo and there's also a mother. Uh, I think her character is, in my opinion, more badass and more terrifying than Martian Rowe is because she literally keeps the nameless, those things that eat Jedi, on a chain. It's basically her lapdog. And <laughs> I've never seen Martian Rowe do anything as cool as that. I do think Martian Rowe is a tactician. I don't think he's on the level of Darth Maul, let alone Thrawn, of course, or, or Darth Sidious. But I think he is a tactician for sure. I just think that, like I said before, the High Republic needs to settle a little bit. It needs to allow itself, you know, to get the exposure and, and just to breathe a little bit and to settle in. Because I think when you force so much media upon everybody else, I don't think people are able to appreciate everything that is done. And there are so many writers. It is a fantastic era of Star Wars to just be exposed to at the start of enjoying Star Wars. There's a lot of people that never really liked Star Wars and they started with the High Republic because, you know, it offered them so much with expression and, and, and identity and so many beautiful things that I think the Star Wars Expanded Universe does so well, other than, of course, live action. And that's where you get that. That's where you get that pleasure. That's where you get that beautifulness from Star Wars. Because, you know, you are a hardcore fan. You are reading this. You are enjoying that, which a lot of the other media doesn't. And I think that's why, at the very least, Try one of these books. Get into it. 
you know, try some of the more important books. I think that it's a lot harder to get into some of the, the youth, the trill to the children's book, but some of them are, some of them are great. Some of them have fantastic characters. Um, I, I just want to see uh, more consistency in the High Republic when it comes to villains, because that's the only thing that I really believe is holding itself back from being truly fantastic. Uh, you're gonna you're gonna meet a lot of characters. You're gonna meet so many freaking characters, characters that you probably won't even remember because there is that many. And they also do a very good job of uh, branching out into multimedia, like I was talking about earlier with the books and the comics. So maybe someone gets a little bit of notice in a book, but then they have a whole comic rendition of of their entire story arc and who they are, and it's so compelling, and you just want to see that inside one of the larger stories. And I don't think we've really had that yet. So I think when Star Wars The High Republic ends up meeting, and when we finally get to see what's gonna happen here, there's a climax, and some of these characters are gonna live longer than uh, the rest of them and uh, exceed, you know, and they're gonna flesh out. Uh, I think that The High Republic is really gonna hit its stride, but it's coming back again. And I can't wait to see what's more because we just had the newest High Republic show. And there's a lot of characters that people wanted to, uh, to, to come back because they thought they were dead. It's a great time to be a Star Wars fan. There's so much going on. And I think, honestly, truly, if you want to read The High Republic, or at the very least, if you're not reading it, I think you're missing out. I think it's a disservice to yourself, especially as a Star Wars fan. Come and take this. Enjoy it. Try a little bit of it, you know? And if you don't, oh well, no big deal. Audio's, audio, Audible is right there. You know, you can... You can uh, deactivate that free trial, cancel that free trial, and then that's it. You didn't, you didn't spend a single penny. So go out there, go and do it, go enjoy yourself, and download that High Republic book, The Rising Storm. Get, uh, uh, well, you can't, you can't read that one. You have to do Light of Jedi. Go out there and get Light of the Jedi, all right? And if that one's, and that one's okay, if that one's okay for you, you okay, you have to finish it, you have to finish it, and then you go into Rising Storm. And if you do not like The Rising Storm, then I definitely think perhaps the High Republic is not for you, for sure. Because at that point, I felt like, yep, it was sold. I have to watch this because The, the Rising Storm was by far one of the greatest books I had ever read. Anyway, fam, The High Republic is awesome. I hope you enjoy it, and I think you should take a risk. Go in there, get involved with the characters, okay? Because at the end of the day, no matter what, I'm still going to talk to you about it here. In the Dark Temple. Visited by Mara Jade, Luke Skywalker, and Kyle Katarn, and so many of the Force Sensitives like yourself. I am Lord Dagavir, and this is Unlock the Knowledge. I'll see you around, fam. Deuces.